This video will discuss the Z component of angular momentum for molecular orbitals. So let's assume we have some diatomic molecule here. We have nucleus A of charge ZA plus, nucleus B of charge ZB plus. We have our internucleus internuclear axis here, which is defined as the Z axis. So we have our LZ operator, which as we remember from the rigid rotor and the hydrogen atom, tells us the angular momentum component around the Z direction, or the angular momentum around the, the Z axis. So our Hamiltonian for a diatomic molecule is going to commute with the LZ operator, which means that not only are our eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian the wave functions, they are also eigenfunctions of LZ. So the LZ operator acting on our wave function or individual molecular orbital psi i is going to equal h bar m sub i times psi i. So for every molecular orbital, the eigenvalue of the LZ uh, operator is going to be h bar times m sub i, the z component uh, orbital angular momentum quantum number. And the values that you're going to get for m sub i are going to either be 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, etc. So the values, depending on the absolute value of m, are going to correspond to a state label for what we call these bonds. So if the bond has an eigenvalue, has an eigen, uh, not eigenvalue, has a quantum number of 0 for its z angular momentum, then that's labeled a sigma orbital. If the orbital of a diatomic has an absolute value of its angular momentum quantum number of 1, that's called a pi orbital. If it has a value of 2, which we don't frequently see in general chemistry or anything other than kind of advanced inorganic chemistry, that would be a delta orbital. And 3 would be a phi. Notice that these lowercase Greek letters are corresponding to a similar letter which corresponds to the uh, to the English S, P, D, F, etc. Sigma S, Pi P, Delta D, Phi F. So you might guess that for L equal for absolute value of M equals four being a G function, that this would probably be labeled as a gamma uh, orbital. All right, so let's see this in action. So we're going to have, for example, if we have one S orbitals and we're having those overlap. If we take this molecule and we rotate it 90 degrees out of the plane, then we're looking down the internuclear axis now. The z-axis is going into the plane of the board. We would see an orbital that looks like this. There's no shape with respect to rotation around the z-axis. I always stay positive no matter where I am. So this is, in fact, where absolute value of m equals 0, and this would be a sigma orbital. So that's why s orbitals combine to form sigma orbitals and sigma bonds. All right, we have uh, 2pz, which is aligned on the z-axis here. So that is a p orbital, but if I look at it along the z-axis, I just see something that looks cylindrically symmetric. So looking down this axis, all I see is a circle. So that, again, the overlap of 2pz orbitals in atomic or, sorry, in diatomic molecules also gives a sigma orbital. For px and py, those are out of the axis. They're extended above and below the axis. So if I look down on the axis now, I see one lobe where I'm positive and another side where I'm negative. If I rotate around the axis during 360 degree rotation, I go from positive to negative back to positive one time. I complete one complete uh, sine wave in the density as I go around. So that's corresponding to a quantum number of, of magnitude of 1. So these 2px and 2py's overlap to form pi orbitals. For 3dz squared, again this is looking down the axis. If I look down the axis, it looks cylindrically symmetric. The 3dz squared in, di in diatomics gives us sigma orbitals. 3dzx has one lobe that's in the axis and one lobe that's out of the axis. If I look down the axis here, I see something that looks like this. Again, one lobe as I go around 
as I go from uh, side to side there. So that would form what I would call a pi orbital. But 3dxy and 3dx squared minus y squared, both of the lobes of those d orbitals are away from the axis. So one coming out of and going behind the plane of the board and another in the plane of the board, but both perpendicular to the z-axis. If I look down the internuclear axis for this one, I see four lobes coming out at me, going from positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, going or changing two times as I go around, giving me an absolute value of the quantum number m of two. So these orbitals would overlap to form delta orbitals. So you've probably heard in general chemistry and other courses, lots of discussion of sigma bonds, pi bonds, sigma orbitals, pi orbitals, the like. So this is actually where those labels come from and the actual idea from quantum mechanics, which allows us to assign those labels to those individual states.